John Deere service recommendations. So based partially off of this, uh, we're going to do our first oil change. So we actually just hit 60 hours on this tractor. It's recommending some stuff at 50 hours. I went beyond a little bit because life got in the way. We had a few things to do. But we're going to do a few things here today. We're going to change the engine oil filter. I'm going to change the transmission filter, which is, which is recommended at 50 hours in every 200. I am going to use a 15W40 oil. We rarely get below freezing here. It gets cold in the middle of winter for a while, but uh, when those days come, the tractor is going to have a nice warm garage to sit in. So I'm not too worried about using that oil. Uh, if you're in a colder climate, the tractor sits outside, you might want to use a different oil. So we're going to get started here. There's only a few tools really needed. 17 millimeter wrench for the uh, drain plug in the pan. Oil filter is an M806418. So we'll put that wrench over on that side. Got a funnel to put the oil in. We got two different types of filter wrenches here. I'm a big fan of these. This is the old classic style, which uh, works in a lot of applications based on where the filter is in this tractor. I think it's going to be a lot easier to use one of these. If you've never seen one of these before, it uh, goes right onto the end of the filter. You can put a ratchet on it. And what happens is, if we can get a good angle on this, when you start to turn this, these teeth close against the outside of the filter and then you just spin it off. These are fantastic items. The alternative to this one was uh, an old strap filter that I had. It's a little piece of square tubing with a strap around it, put on the end of the filter, start spinning it with a wrench, like a ratchet, and it would snug up and spin it right off. So our oil filter on this is on the right hand side sitting right down here by the fuel filter there's the oil filter so I'm gonna grab the drain pan we'll get that placed underneath we'll get the crankcase drained and then we'll come back and we'll do this side so let's just maybe leave this camera set right about there so we can see what's going on and we'll crawl underneath and let's drain the uh, crankcase. And we'll zoom this out for a sec. Not sure what you guys do with your old oil. I'm a I'm a big fan of these things right here. It's a nice little container. Depending on what you're changing oil in, you can get a fair bit into this. It's got a cap on it for easy draining. Pop this cover off. Drain right into it. It's got a nice little screen there so you can set your oil filter on it. You can set your drain plug on it. Whatever you need to do. Once this gets full, I've got a five gallon pail that I dump this into. And the five gallon pail is what goes into the recycling place with all the old fluids. So we'll zoom this one back in on the filter here. And let's go underneath with the wrench and uh, let's turn the crankcase. That should be a pretty good angle right there. Let's find where I set the wrench down. Put the cap off our drain pan. Let's find the bolt on this. Here's the drain plug right here. I got this wire resting pretty much right against it. So. 17 millimeter side would be the one that we want. Make sure we pull this the right way. I don't want to over tighten this by no means. There we go. Get our drain pan centered. Treads in there pretty far. So the capacity on this, I believe, is 
2.7 liters or 2.9 quarts. We're in Canada. I bought liters of oil. So we'll be using just a little bit better than two and a half liters. 2.7 by what it says. So that oil is pretty black. Uh, I'm not really a big diesel guy, haven't had many diesels in my lifetime. But very common for your oil to look black and like it's very abused. I'm going to go up top and pull the cap off the uh, valve cover here. See if we can get some better drainage action down there. Okay, so we'll let that drain out a little bit more. And let's go around and see if we can pull the filter off. So these tools, you just kind of hold the end of it till it grabs down onto the filter. And you know what? This one doesn't go small enough for this filter. So we'll just use the old school style. Probably have to get right underneath to get my hand on that thing. That doesn't want to seem to work very well. So let's put this out at 90 and see if we can get on this way. I'm going to back out a little bit so you can see what's happening here. I don't want to bend the dipstick if this lets go. so. Let's just pull the dipstick off and we'll set that up here on the rag. There we go. A few little small turns. Oil filter shouldn't be too tight. Uh, Engine oil is drained. So let's slide this over. And see if we can get this oil to fall right into my oil pan. There we go. A couple of holes on the side, but not bad. Leave that one there. Put the dipstick in right now. Because that's not going to be in the way. I'm going to wipe off the face of where the filter seats up against.
piece of paper towel, just a nice little wipe. Let's get all the dust off the top of this bottle. It's been sitting on the shelf since I bought the tractor. Waiting for the first oil change. Let's punch a little hole in there. So once again, that is a M8064184. John Deere filter. Take just a tiny bit of oil, nice new oil. Let's put it all over this rubber gasket here. I want to make sure you got some on there. I've done this all my life. I always try and get some oil into the filter. You don't want so much that you're going to waste a bunch when you go to screw it on, but a little bit of oil in there just to help it when it goes to prime on the first startup. So, as soon as that starts to, starts to contact good, quarter, half turn. You don't have to tighten these a lot. Pretty much hand tight's all you need. So, got a couple more drips coming out from the, from the crankcase still. Went right on top of my container down there, but that's okay. We'll go slide back underneath the other side, put the drain plug back in if it's all drained out. We'll just put this rag up here to deal with afterwards. I guess that's the only complaint about this particular drain pan is uh, the top of it isn't, isn't really big. I had another one of these at one time and it had a nice big funnel on top. Kind of a uh, Kind of like a big saucer. A couple little tiny drips coming out of there. I'm not going to worry about that too much. It's pretty much drained. The tractor was warmed up. The engine was was plenty warm. I could feel that heat on my hand when I pulled this plug. So let's get this screwed back in all the way finger tight. I don't have a clean towel anymore wipe my hands off but that's okay wrenches clean up easy and we'll just give this a little bit of a turn there we go that's it so the next one is a transmission filter which is about two feet behind where the crankcase is here so I'm gonna spin the camera around We'll take this old filter and this rag out of the drain tub. Put this into the bin beside me. So transmission hydraulic filter, LVA16054, 16054 right there. So this is going to be pretty much the same as doing the engine oil filter. Bigger wrench for this one. We could use the end one, but there should be lots of room to get on this filter under there. Let's get this plastic off of it. Go 
go back to the other side. Slide off the slide off the filter. Okay, so if we just spin this right around and back here. Okay, that's our transmission filter right there. So, not sure how much oil is going to come out of this one when we pull this filter, but we'll find out right away. Could have done that by hand. So they say you don't need to change this oil for 200 hours. So all we're going to do is change the filter here today. It's going to take a, we're going to have to top up that crankcase or that, uh, that transmission because lost a bit there. So let's grab the new oil jug, put a little bit of oil around the ring. Low viscosity high guard, transmission and hydraulic fluid. So take our filter just like we did for the engine. A little bit of oil onto there. Pour a little bit inside. We'll go back and put this one up. About a third full is what it takes to get into these filters. I'm just going to use my finger to wipe off the surface that the filter mates against. Just wipe that off on my pants. Could have put a little bit more oil in it. See when I tipped it up nothing came off at all. So spin that on till it's hand tight, just snug, and a bit of a turn. There we go. So there's the transmission. Let's slide all our tools out of here, the drain pan. So now we have two things left to do. We need to put some engine oil in here and uh, check the transmission. So let's do a little camera move up to the engine compartment. Get by this tripod. not really 
very good viewing angle, so let's spin around this side. There's our valve cover right there. So let's get in and get that plug off. <coughs> that was a little warm getting my hand in there because I had the engine warmed up. If you got big hands, that's a little bit of a snug spot to get into. that from this side instead. So we want 2.7 liters or 2.9 quarts. So this was a US gallon, 3.78 liters. So we need about two thirds of this. We'll have to keep a close eye on this. You know, some of these jugs have nice little windows where you can actually see what you're pouring out. This one does not. So we'll get a bunch in, check the dipstick. There's a few little spots of oil on the ground, but uh, this is the concrete pad right in front of the shop. It's, it's seen more than a few of those. That's not really a big issue. I don't like spilling it on the ground, but this driveway gets lots of stuff on it. This concrete pad here, we do a lot of projects in the garage and you, know, you can't help but get a little bit on the concrete. It's easy enough to soak that up and clean it up. So that's about it. We're going to go back and check the transmission right after this. Top that up a little bit. But uh, that's going to be pretty much all she wrote. We're almost there. A couple, couple more little lugs and engine should be full. So I'm going to get the camera out of the way, turn this off, and uh, we'll just continue on this operation. Questions or comments are welcome. And uh, trying to get ourselves to a thousand subscribers and do a lot more videos. We got lots of projects on the go around here. Not sure what your interest is, but uh, we have three of these tractors. This one is named Buck. Uh, she decided to name them Buck Doan Fawn because we got a little 125 for minor yard work. We got the X540 that's gotten a lot of use out of it in the last few years here. This is the new one, the 1025R. We got all kinds of attachments for it we're going to start using and we'll show videos of, of how some of these attachments work. We bought this one with the backhoe. Got a post hole digger for it. Got a four foot wide brush cutter for it. We got a box scraper for it and we have a big woodland mills wood chipper that goes on the back of it that's pretty nice too but uh do some works on bikes got an old car project here that's going to start getting a little bit of work 37 chevy two-door got the body sitting on a dolly so it can come into the garage for the winter and get some work done still got the old big red chevy that uh Hasn't had much done to it yet. That uh, that turned into a long-term project. We kind of steered away from that one for now. It just, it wasn't required right now. So 
We'll be getting to that one later. Need a fair bit more oil in there. We're only up to here. A couple more good glugs and then we'll turn it on. Make sure that oil filter is full and be absolutely positive. We got just what we need in there. So that's it. Camera's going off. If you're not subscribed, we would like to encourage you to subscribe and maybe hit the notifications. You can see some of the other stuff we got going on around the homestead. Thank you very much. Appreciate you watching.